So question is being asked, what's new? So yeah, there was something new this time in this uh, exercise because uh, in most of the times we we say that uh, in this type of exercise, uh, breeders were guiding the group, but uh, all breeders of Asia, almost all were traveling. So I don't know intentional or non-intentionally, but but you will have some new uh, things coming out this time. Okay, you're representing them. And when they come back, they mightn't be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did, uh, actually, uh, we partitioned this uh, like uh, uh, themes uh, uh, strategically. So traits were identified and uh, uh, some of the uh, things, uh, traits which uh, uh, we can address through gene bank means. Uh, some of the traits where uh, uh, we don't have uh, uh, sources available in uh, cultivated uh, backgrounds, we can go to pre-breeding. So I'll come back. So this was uh, the strategy, uh, I think, followed in other groups also. And uh, if uh, barkers are not available, but traits are important, then genomics and trait discovery group will uh, uh, find out the markers. And if the team is confident that markers are available, we, we uh, take the forward bidding step for some of the traits. And uh, everything fails. We go to cellular and molecular uh, biology and genetic engineering. So, so, so this, this was, this is the path. Uh, and in this path, means we, you can see uh, uh, the group identified traits. Uh, uh, for different crops like uh, chickpea, you can see uh, this uh, BGM and uh, brown gray, gray mold. Then uh, uh, we have two other traits, mechanical harvesting and herbicide tolerance. So there are mega projects going on and there is a, a mega work uh, for this. We need to still screen some of the so, uh, germplasm available in the gene bank for PGNP again. Uh, some of the diseases and pests, pot borer, uh, blight, and then maruka, and then again herbicide tolerance, photoperiod insensitivity, and water logging, uh, 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 abiotic stresses. Same is in the case of groundnut, some diseases like LLS, stem rot, collar rot, and uh, aflatoxin is an issue there, bacterial blight, wilt. And in case of pearl millet, uh, we had uh, a blast disease, uh, uh, drought in case of uh, abiotic stress and then uh, iron zinc, so sorghum, uh, mid charcoal rot green quality. So these are the uh, traits where we think we ha are yet to screen uh, some of the germplasm which is uh, yet not screened. So these are some of the uh, traits, these are some of the traits where we think we need support from uh, uh, wide hybridization, uh, pre-breeding in chickpea, again some diseases, BGM, DRR, Spodopetra and Podborer. Pigeon P, we could identify uh, these uh, pot borer, maruka, and phytophthora. Uh, groundnut, uh, this LLS, stem rot, collar rot, and spodopetera. So, pearl millet, we were comfortable uh, for most of the traits, means there were some traits, but we thought uh, we will first screen uh, the germplasm. In sorghum, uh, there are stem borer and shoot fly are the traits, which uh, we will like to address through pre breeding approach. And then these are some of the traits where the team thinks we need to identify uh, markers. So chickpea, uh, I think so diseases are there, then mechanical harvesting, and some of abiotic stresses, drought and heat. In pigeon pea, again, it is a combination of diseases and uh, uh, a pot borer, a groundnut, again, aflatoxin, and uh, drought, oil quality, oil content, iron zinc, and then these diseases, stem rot and collar rots. In pearl millet, again, uh, we uh, will like to uh, generate markers for blast, drought, iron zinc, uh, downy mildew, and rust. And for sorghum, again, there is a list of traits, shoot fly, drought, anthracnose, iron zinc, grain physical quality. So these are the traits where we, the team feels we need to generate uh, uh, markers. Forward breeding. So these are some of the traits which were identified uh, where uh, team thinks we have reached to a stage where uh, we have uh, good uh, robust markers uh, which can be immediately validated and uh, those can be pushed to to, uh, to mainstream breeding programs of these crops. 
so some of the crops you don't see a trade like pigeon pea there is no trade but for chickpea the team is quite confident that tesco kite blight fusarium wilt and rot so we are at a stage where uh, from where we can proceed towards forward bidding in groundnut there are again three trades uh, rust uh, a late leaf spot and then oil quality so these are the trades where we are quite close to again pushing to forward bidding millet our uh, molecular bidder says drought sorghum also drought so teams are quite close in cereals uh, for for a very uh, ha, uh, abiotic uh, very good trade like means hard trade drought so we can uh, we can move in that direction cell and molecular uh, biology group and genetic engineering so if we are not able to handle these trades for server i have discussed so so we take this approach so largely uh, Pooja says uh, handling through transgenics. So this approach. So there is a list of traits you can see. Means uh, uh, let me not read the entire list. So chickpea, you find uh, uh, a list of traits. Means somewhere the approach can be transgenics, and then you somewhere you find candidate gene discovery uh, and validation is required, and then several traits are there for chickpea. Again for pigeon pea. again for groundnut you have a flotoxin issue and then allergen allergens so somewhere you find genome editing also uh, for for pearl millet uh, we had identified two traits so like trait was major trait was one rancidity which the group thinks that uh, couldn't be addressed till date uh, because uh, tough trait means uh, quality trait where even uh, as breeders we were not confident to address and not a priority traits when we consider in relation to other uh, traits which are uh, prominent then double haploid technology so that is again in sorghum also so seed systems was discussed at length in cereals and uh, legumes both uh, for south asia uh, we discussed about uh, uh, pearl millet and uh, sorghum so the discussion revolve around like uh, uh, where the product is a hybrid and uh, so there is a, a, a mistake hold the private sector sitting there who can effectively produce and market to to the ecologies so there is not much issue but where so our opvs are there the issues we uh, were discussing they are more or less same whether it is india or whether it is uh, uh, african countries so so those were the issues we we discussed and uh, private sector as we know they don't uh, are not much interested in in opvs so because of that reason sorghum rainy season and uh, pearl millet uh, seed production issues have been resolved so in case of legumes also uh, some some uh, the seed village concept has worked in asia so seed village uh, concept uh, could deliver some of the cultivars uh, in uh, uh, in some of the ecology so other thing which came uh, as a uh, which was identified between india and africa was option of uh, uh, truthfully labeled seed so truthfully labeled seed is allowed uh, for marketing by government of india so which i think is not the case in most of african countries so that has really uh, attracted a uh, private sector to invest and in a short span of time they come they they develop cultivars and straight away go to market and market them so that one uh, big factor uh, makes a big difference between uh, seed availability between two two regions so um, that was uh, in nutshell about asian rural any questions eric you're missing an insect somewhere <laughs> oh <laughs> go eric I just, just but it's not, not missing an insect but some misconception we don't need to screen for sorghum major resistance we have screened over 20000 germplasm accessions and have about 25 sources of resistance some of which are common between asia and africa and of course for some the resistance break so take off the mitch from germplasm screening markers there is very remote or no possibility in pigeon pea because it's highly susceptible to both marco and helicobar sorry helicobar but there is much possibility in chickpea and that's where we have populations and have done some earlier work so change for 
marker identification from pigeon feet to chickpea. Similarly, transgenics, not for shoot fly, no, no toxin protein or gene is known as of today that is effective against diptyrants or deployed in the transgenic crops. So we can only deploy Bt genes against stem borer, which will be applicable both for Asia and uh, ESA and of course even WCA. So maybe we, I can later on mail the changes to you because that's the ground reality. Okay, can I have my go uh, at Asia? Um, your wish list of uh, traits, again, articulated. Again, I would have thought within the conversation there'd be some categorization of those from what's available now, they can be converted into SNPs or whatever you do, what's, what's doable in the next one to three years and what's a priority for the next four to six years. You know, was there some discussion of, about this, uh, not just priorities, you know, we want to do it, but what's doable within what time frame? Because we've got a forward breeding program, surely we need to know well, what can we do now. And I've, I've heard in um, ground nut we can do this three traits and ten markers. Is that right? Where's Manish? So that's doable now, but there's still more to be done. What's what's um, what's the plan? To, how many traits and markers are we going to have within the next twelve months against your list? Can we do that? So I think this is the answer. Means when team was discussing this issue, so these were the traits where team was confident. Forward bidding? So uh, yeah, they're the traits that are available now, right? Right. What's going to be available in 12, what, what's going to be added to that list in 12 months time? This was, these were the traits where we need to uh, still, these are the priority traits where we need to develop markers. So I can write them down and in 12 months we'll come back to this meeting and file of mood to the forward breeding list. No, 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 I think th this is not the case again. So these are the traits where we still need to find out the markers first. So in what time frame are you going to give us? Are you going to do it in the next this is where 12 months, the next 18 months? So this is where we reach the last 25 years. From the, the body stage, stage we have, uh, like in, in case of port horror because uh, I think still we need to find out whether we have the mapping population for that or not from the pre-breeding. Okay, I don't want to go through. Sorry, uh, Ratchet. I don't want to go through every trait, but I, I would have thought we could have some sort of table about what the traits are and when do you expect to have diagnostic markers, yeah, yeah, yeah. what the plan is. And I don't see any of that uh, art articulated here. So, yes, yeah, so this is not the idea which you are asking So for keeping these traits here. Okay, so, so that's my, my one go there. I've got a second one too. Is that um, it's you know we probably should have put Vincent on this program too because nobody's mentioned phenotyping in in you know these priorities and how phenotyping fits in. I mean Vincent's not the only phenotyper here. I mean my understanding is in the genomics people do phenotyping as well. But is that a constraint and what what level of investment um, in terms of you know this whole uh, genetic gain program? What investment do we have to have in phenotyping and what resources have to go into that? And that to me has been missing from the, the presentation so far. True or not true? Half, half of the resources should go to phenotyping for test and disease. disease, disease. <laughs> <laughs> not, only, not only that. Not only that. So we should have had Vincent on the program. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But what, what, in fact, this should start another phase. <laughs> no, it's another phase where in <coughs> for each trait out of say somewhere we have put two uh, two approaches or three approaches. At this stage, we are at this is this, this approach. To next stage, what is the time frame and resources required? Like in say ESA, we did something, and then if you go stage-wise time frame, and then that would be, be requiring uh, time frame and uh, players there and resources. So that would be perhaps next stage of this. People agree with that because it's been written down. Okay. And, and, and just to add to Peter, I think if we see all the traits, many of the traits I think can be well handled by biotic stress team, entomologist and pathologist. All these diseases you see uh, and uh, insects and more uh, nutritional quality traits. So we have very good uh, screening uh, phenotyping systems for like iron zinc and for these oil quality measures. So yeah, means when we say Vincent, it is basically linked to abiotic stresses 
mostly drought actually. So others are there. Yeah, okay. I, I did acknowledge that, that there's more phen people doing phenotyping than just Vincent. Emma. Chickpea. Uh, Peter, can I answer? Yeah, yeah, of course you can. So regarding the Ascochyta blight and Fusarium wilt, right now we have uh, markers that are flanking the QTL regions and we have used them for integration. But soon we will be having these markers uh, for forward breeding. So in a like over a period of time, we should be able to give uh, those markers that will be diagnostic markers that can be used for breeding. And in case of drought, we already have. Or so these are the uh, markers that are related to drought-related component traits, but not drought as a whole. So uh, actually, this listing uh, should have been like only for mechanical harvesting. Uh, heat tolerance should have been here for trait mapping approach or uh, genomics and trait discovery. Yeah. I have a very simple answer. Like uh, we are ready with the tools and technologies, and if we are given those data sets, that repository will be available in very soon, in 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 few weeks, not months. So I think we, we are in talk with uh, some of those kind of things, but uh, data has to come from the. Say so this this evaluation part is done by the concerned physiologist or pathologist in AFS, say agri this food system CRPs. So whosoever is evaluating, suppose some pathologists are evaluating like that, the data is available with them. So they, whosoever evaluate, they can provide to the uh, Abhishek or somebody. In gene bank, we have only passport and characterization data for those. No, I'm not telling, but but just for clarification, because Peter asked me, thinking that I have all the evaluation. Yeah, that's that's where that's where a institutional mechanism has to be there, Peter. If you remember that, if there is a institutional mechanism that germ germplasm, if it goes to somebody, then the data comes back to the. Uh, to, to either gene bank or to Abhishek with copy to me so that we have that data somewhere. I mean, we've, you can't force that. Good one, Hima. We'll write that down as an action. Uh, whose responsibility is that? Harry? Okay, <laughs> 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 okay thanks, SK. Um, any other questions around Asia? Oh, there is. Is that Chris up there? Okay, thanks, Chris. Uh, a, a couple of ideas there is that 
This this list is is uh, sponsored by Research Program Genetic Gains. We, before we used to have programs around crops, so all the chickpea scientists were in the same program, and you could talk. Now we've gone regions and a, an overall genetic gain program, as you all know. So this this list is owned by um, Rajiv and the genetic gain program, and so they have to play some role in trying to coordinate the you know the, the priority traits for chickpea across the different regions. Just quickly. No, that was a comma. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a full stop. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sorry, <I won't. laughs> um, so, so that's one thing. And the second thing is I would expect we're an institution that you're a chickpea breeder in Ethiopia that you're talking to the chickpea breeders in Asia too. It's not like you have to be in a program or in a formal structure to have the conversations about the priority traits or what you're going to work on or talking to Harry, etc. Full stop. <laughs> Rakesh and then you. Uh, Pooja, I have a question for you. This is on uh, Epomexis. No? Okay. So thanks, Peter. So, no, I just wanted to mention that when you said that this list is sponsored by research from Genetic Gain and owned by Genetic Gain, rather I would like to make some changes in this one that this is, list is coming out after having the discussion with the different programs, Asia, WCA, ESA. So I believe that this list is the result of the joint discussion with the different colleagues. What we will be doing as a Genetic Gains program that we will be having, this is very good that we have this compilation of list. Together with our theme leaders, then we will have that one, which are those traits which goes across that uh, regions, which are the specific, then our colleagues, and also we will have the priority, which traits can be addressed by just conventional breeding, or by just markers, or by just pre-breeding, or genetic uh, GTD, or cell molecular biology, then we will be having those cross-program, uh, cross interaction, collaboration, so that's our plan. So just one, thank you. That's, that's very politically correct. Yeah, that's good. It is. Okay, Rakesh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, Pooja, this uh, is regarding epomixes. You know, I mean, I've seen that trait listed under chickpea. Uh, but I understand uh, epomixes holds great promise uh, in crops where there are single cross hybrids available, wherein you can use epomixes as a tool for fixation of heterosis. So, uh, I mean, if this trait can be exploited for, say, Solvilet or Pigeon Pea or Sorghum where hybrids are available, I think that would be great. So, we got this from Purangor and uh, this is a very new initiative that is a technology, proprietary technology uh, that we are working on with our collaborators in Canada and Germany. So, we will use chickpea as a first crop and we, uh, at the moment, we have permission to do only for chickpea. So, if it is you know, translatable in chickpea, then we can look for other crops. So since it is a proprietary technology, we have to be a little careful. So we started with chickpea. Uh, so um, uh, there are some labs actually working on epomixes in Pearl Village. And they have generated information. There are, you know, I mean, a uh, cluster of genes which uh, are responsible for DH induction as well as epomixes. So maybe that information can be used as a starting point for our research uh, in epomixes in Pearl Village. Yes, the exploratory idea. Okay. Uh, I think you, you can carry that conversation on. Okay, we're going to wrap up now. We've got a, uh, oh, Patrick, yes. I was going to wrap up, but I can take a question from you. Okay, so after listening to all of us, um, there's just a few things run, that are running in my mind. I, I think that it is obvious now that there is a lot of convergence um, across the three regions if you look at the traits there and, and, and what we need to be dealing with, things that relate to diversity, for example, in terms of the targets that were going, whether it's disease or, or use and adaptation, that was ecological types of issues. And then the whole thing about deployment in terms of the product development. I think the big question is, now that we have picked up all of this, uh, I think we will need to work with the team leaders. It's just a comment to make sure that we have those within those uh, that broad range some of these things that can be collectively collectively done so i think the theme leaders together with us who have been listed here they have to do some further meeting of sorts and 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 
and, and fine tuning exactly what we need to do within the next maximum 15 months or thereabout. Because I think some of the things are a long shot, they are, they are still a wish list, but if we can fine tune and be very honest with what we can deliver, I think it will take us close to, to what we want. But it, it was just a response to what Chris raised. So some of the things that we have done here require a lot of convergence. And indeed, the traits and the issues we have raised here, most of them are convergence issues. So for me, I see a lot of convergence. And I'm three years old in ICRISAT, and this is the first time I'm seeing a lot of convergence between what the genomics group is doing and what the conventional with the oldies are doing. Thank you. OK, thanks, Patrick. Uh, that's, that's a comment that Rajiv says he'll address when he's doing his sum up. OK, so we're going to wrap up now, try to get out of here in a reasonable amount of time. So I'm going to ask a few people for reflections. And Ing, I think you said you would uh, provide some reflections as a someone that's joining ICRISAT and hearing where the status we're at. So yes, really keen yes. to hear what you um, think. Yeah, first of all, thank you um, for, for this opportunity. And um, I just want to share some of my thoughts on this. Uh, your commitment of giving those populations for this uh, intertech system on under this uh, fort breeding umbrella, really. Um, I just want to set some clear expectations. I, I know some of you may have some confusions on um, what you're going to get out of it. Okay, I'm also going to be brutally frank with you. I still in the process of learning. I still do not know a lot of these things, and you know there there, there are a few things that I just came to my mind and before I even start asking you for these things and take money away from your program, I'm going to tell you these things, okay? The, the first thing is the population. We are trying to do, what we're trying to do is we're trying to do early generation selections with markers in order to cut down um, our population size, okay? In order that, for that to work first, we got to see if we have those SNPs and we also need to you know, you guys need to also give me the populations. If 90% of your populations already have those genes in your crop, in your populations, in your breeding populations, this approach will not give you anything, okay? And if your male and female parents already are monomorphic on those trait markers or um, diagnostic markers, I will not give you anything more, okay? Th th those are things for for thoughts. I cannot answer those questions right now. I don't know your populations. Okay, the second thing is tracking. I don't know how the plot sizes, I frankly don't even know which crop goes to which country right now. But there's a big issue here, tracking. If you have 10,000 plants, okay, I give you the answer, I've selected 1,000 for you. And I tell you these are the 1,000, how are you going to go find it in the field? GPS tracking, based on my best understanding, is it only gives you an error of about one meter civilian use. So if your plants are less than one meter apart, can you tell that apart? Okay. The third thing is logistics, because some programs pledge to send 1,500. Some program pledge to give 30,000, okay? Collecting 1,500 could be a one-day task. 30,000 with the same one device may take you one month. Can you have those plants in the field for that long? Or how soon should you ship out those DNA? Because you cannot shove the DNA. I assume you do not have a lyophilizer to dry those samples. DNA will break down. That's the truth, OK? And the chemistry. I do not know the chemistry used by Intertech. I don't know if anybody knows this better. Please speak. Because, you know, plant tissues are different. Cell wall thickness are different. You're trying to use whatever CTAP method, or whatever, to extract the DNA. I don't know what's the recovery. I cannot tell you, like, you send me 30,000 samples. I'm going to give you data on 30,000 samples. I may give you 15,000. I may give you 2,000. So these are the baseline that where we're at right now. And coming back to the, the timeline, I think these are very fundamental issues. And if we were to adopt this um, moving forward, I would like to take this opportunity to, to address these. And I think this is something that I can address in one year, 
for six months if you know Manish and Emma can work over time. I think these are very workable issues, and we can really put these things behind. So that that that's really um, you know for my for, for breeding program. I mean for, for for the accountability of you know what I'm going to deliver. To, my pledge to you guys is, you send me samples. I want to give you the highest quality data in return, and you make the calls on your breeding uh, selection. So that that's my pledge to you. So yeah, I hope I don't have any questions. I, I don't know how to answer. Okay, so, Thank you. So any questions for you? <laughs> Okay, well, it's really great that you could join us here for these couple of days to come early, um, with, you know, before you've actually joined ICRASAT and to sit in on these meetings. To, to, to I think, hear a pretty frank assessment of the state of where, status we're at and the discussions we're having and the debates we're having. So uh, I think it's a great entree into ICRASAT and the role you're going to play. So thanks for coming. I think that deserves a round of applause. Okay, a few other thoughts. So, so I should ask the other research program directors. Um, I should ask uh, the research program director for Innovation Assistance for the Drylands to say something, but he doesn't know anything about breeding or SNPs or anything. So he's going to delegate to Vincent to say something. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, I mean, it's a sort of improvisation. Uh, so to just reflect a little bit my uh, my impression in those two days, um, I, I still feel that well, we, uh, we we have a discussion at the level of the genetic gain program. So uh, we, we we target G. Uh, we want to improve uh, the genotype, um, and I, I sort of feel that we would need to have a little bit of a of a broader view on uh, on on what we tackle, and that would probably help uh, refine a little bit those. Those lists, those endless lists of, uh, of of traits and what we call traits that I rather call constraints, no? and so I, I sort of feel that there's uh, maybe too much of a disciplinary entry point in what we we, we try to address, especially in the last presentation, where uh, you know if we don't uh, manage with the gene bank, well, then we manage with this, and if not, we manage with that, and uh, and. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel that sometimes there's a really uh, a little bit of a, of a well, sort of too narrow view on uh, on what we, uh, we 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 want to uh, to target, and, and 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 yes, I mean there's a discussion between uh, between people that have not discussed before, but uh, I mean there's a need for uh, way more of that, and uh, and. I'm, I'm sort of worried that we, we are are we really going to change uh, business? Um, so I, I think that I'm going to stay with with that. Um, my question to you: You're worried, but have you seen progress? I mean, the fact that people in the room here are having this conversation. For example, and. Uh, if we take the, the, the case of drought, I mean, uh, people like uh, like us, I mean, we have been saying for, for many years, I mean, before uh, tackling, I mean, uh, such a complex issue, you need to uh, understand well your environment, and uh, and, and, it's, and it's again like uh, if, 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 if drought was the same everywhere, uh, when we know that it's never the same, never the same in, a, in the same location, never the same 100 kilometers apart, nevertheless, we, we are still sort of aiming at having Diagnostic markers for something that uh, is that complex. No? So that's where that's where I'm, I'm saying. I mean, we need to have a sort of broader sort of input of views. Uh, you know, for example, the third sort of these trade that would be simply sold by agronomic options. In in the end, what do we want? We want to have an increased productivity in uh, in, in the farmer's field. And so, in certain cases, we we may not need to do genetics if we want to improve productivity of peanuts. In, in the whole of Africa, we, we first need to fix the agronomy, you know. And 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 have we talked about agronomy in that in that meeting? Not at all. So the the discussion uh, uh, is taking place, yes, but should take place really in a, in a much broader view. And it's a pity, in fact, to not see the breeder here today. I mean, uh, as the Asian breeder, for example, they are, they are not here, uh, or some people in the in the Asia program who are not here. We are who are dealing, for example, with with agronomic issues, no? and so, in short, to summarize, uh, you have had, I mean, a, a very intense discussion over two days on a very 
disciplinary sort of entry point, uh, even uh, cutting the disciplinary uh, entry point into sub-disciplinary entry points. We, we talk about the genetics, and then we have talked about you know the different components of that genetic bigger components, but forgetting that well you know we want eventually to develop uh, cultivars which are going to be G in an E in an environment in a M, in a management, and even not thinking about the societal uh, interactions. So it's, it's very important, I think, to, uh, to, to have that discussion at a much broader, uh, broader level. Thanks, Vincent. I think people have heard you before on this, and I think in the, in the minutes here we're going to have an action that you're always invited to further discussions around the genetic game program and, and how we're going to move forward. I think it's important to have your perspective. So thanks for that.